research is a process of solving a problem at hand. Research gives an opportunity to a researcher to look at the situation from various perspectives. One of the attributes of research is it is a very systematic process and it is a very planned process. In order to make it a systematic process, it has certain steps to follow. We will be studying about these various steps that are integral part of a research in this session. There are in all six steps in research. They are identification of a research problem, reviewing the literature, specifying the purpose of research, collecting data, analyzing and interpreting data, and the last one, reporting and evaluating research. We shall understand each of these steps in detail. The first step is the identification of a research problem. Now it is very difficult, especially for the novice researcher to identify a research problem that could be completed during the given course of time. So in this, the first stage that is specifying the problem, the researcher has to limit the scope of the research so that it can be completed in the given timeline as well as it gives enough scope for the researcher to go into the details of the study. In the first stage of identification of a research problem, the researcher also gives the justification for selection of that problem. The justification could be from the theoretical background, at times it could be even from his or others practical experiences. The researcher in this step also gives the importance of the research study for the audience of the research or for the other practitioners. So the efforts which he is taking, how they will be useful for the others is given in detail. Thus in the first stage that is identification of a research problem, the researcher gives a broader perspective of the background on which the research is undertaken. We shall be discussing about this stage in detail in some other session as well. After the researcher gives the broad background of the research that is being undertaken, the next step that the researcher follows is the review of literature. Now the researcher takes lot of efforts for conducting the research. That is why one has to ensure that the efforts are not in vain. It is therefore studied beforehand that what other researches are conducted in this area that would give the inputs for conducting this research. At times, the analysis of theoretical background identifies the gaps in the knowledge and that is where the research can fit in. And thus it gives the scope for the necessity of conducting that particular research. Why do we need to conduct this literature review? There are multiple reasons for this. The first one is the literature review tells us whether the study at hand has been researched earlier. And if it has researched earlier, then what perspectives were taken into consideration during that study? And if it is not research, then of course it is an altogether new area. So one can definitely go for research in that area. Literature review assists the researcher in forming the research questions. Thus it gives the closer look of the problem at hand. And the researcher can then goes on detailing the various decisions related to the research. This review also ensures that the current research is built on the existing body of knowledge. As we have seen earlier in pure researches that there are existing theories. So these existing theories, existing principles, they are used as a base for conduction of the current research and thus it forms the knowledge base that has been already generated and it forms the sound foundation for the research and on the basis of that sound foundation the researcher can conduct his research further. The review also gives an idea to the researcher about the design of the study and exactly how does one goes about it. It gives him an idea how others have conducted their researches how others have looked at the same problem from other angles 
and thus it helps him to finalize the decisions related to the conduction of the research. This also includes the identification of instruments and techniques for data collection. It sometimes happens that the same problem of study, the earlier researcher has used say observation as a technique for data collection, maybe the researcher wants to take up as interview as a technique for data collection or maybe a sociometric technique as a technique for data collection. So thus the review of related literature and researches helps the researcher in getting the sound background of not only the theory but also of the earlier attempts made in the same area. Now while conducting this literature review, what are the various sources that the researcher should look into? The researcher is expected to look into the literature like books, journals, encyclopedia, maybe some technical reports, even the earlier researches, maybe some databases online or even offline at times. At times there are index publications on the topic, so even those could be referred to while taking the literature review. Now this literature review is divided into two parts. The first part which deals with the review of the theoretical aspects of the topic at hand that is called as review of related literature whereas the other part which deals with the review of the earlier researches is called as the review of related researches. Now though this uh, literature review is divided into these two parts each part is further divided into a theme wise discussion. For example, suppose research is being conducted on learning styles, then the various types of learning styles that various psychologists have given, they would form maybe one theme. The other theme maybe would be what are the various instruments that are used for measuring the various learning styles. In case of the review of related researches based on the learning style, the review will deal with how the learning style would affect the learning of the students maybe online mode or maybe face to face mode. So thus the review of related literature is considered from both the theoretical angle as well as from the research angle. What does one look for while taking a review of related researches? So first and foremost only those researches which are directly linked with the area of study are taken into consideration and only those researches are reported in the review of related researches. For example, if a researcher is studying on cooperative learning strategies to be used in online learning and if one does not find such researches conducted in online mode, then the researcher would go for those researches which are dealing with cooperative learning strategies in face to face mode at least. So the basically the researches that are picked up for writing review, they should be related to one's area of study. Taking the review further, the researcher looks into the design that the earlier researchers have used, whether it was a quantitative research method used or whether a qualitative research method was used. If it was say qualitative research method then which type of qualitative research method was used. So the researcher looks into those details. He further looks into the what kind of population types were tapped, how much was the sample, which was the sampling design that was used for selection of that sample, which were the various instruments and techniques for data collection while collecting the data, how exactly was the experiment conducted with the sample, how the data was gathered, how was it analyzed and what were the major findings. So this gives him a complete picture about what exactly was done in this area before he takes up his research further. Now while reviewing the literature or the researches, three major skills are required. Number one is locating the books and journals where such kind of researches are reported. So one has to really look into the details of the library database or online database and then take a decision on where would one find such kind of resources. The second skill that comes into picture is choosing the appropriate researches 
suitable for the study at hand. Here once again it is a critical decision as sometimes it happens that there are no researches which are directly relevant to the problem at hand. This happens especially in the new areas like use of instructional designing or use of educational technology. Now the third skill that is required here is the skill of summarization. Imagine that doctoral thesis is available for the researcher to review. The doctoral study would be definitely say 300 to 500, 700 pages long. Here the researcher is expected to pick up those crucial elements from that PhD thesis which he has to report in the review of related researches. So it calls for lot of skills of summarization. This is not only in case of the review of related researches but it also required for the review of related literature. In this case also the researcher refers to lots of material on the theories and principles behind and then tries to summarize them in his or her own words while writing the literature review. Here is one table given as a sample to summarize the review of related researches. This table is not useful for giving in the document that may be to be submitted to the university but this is definitely useful for a student to work on the back end. Now here you, as you see the titles they are serial numbers so where the serial number of the research would come. The first column is the title of the research, then the researcher, main design of the study, major findings is the next column and the most important is the last column the researcher's observation on that particular research. Now this particular column would help the researcher in writing the summary of the review of the related researches and here is the place where one is able to identify the similarities in the enquiry made earlier as well as the differences in the findings. So this column would give the areas which need the deeper studies further and thus it helps in identifying the gaps in the earlier knowledge. After the review of related literature the next step comes is the specification of purpose of the study. This gives the details about why a particular study is taken then what is the best suitable design for that particular study, what are the best suitable sampling methods that are used and which are the various techniques and instruments used for data collection. This also signals the kind of data that could be generated through the research. Specifying the purpose of the research also helps in narrowing down the hypothesis and research questions for the further studies. The step of specifying the purpose of research helps in narrowing down the hypothesis and research questions for the study at hand. What is the major content in this purpose of the study statement? The first part deals with the major reason why this study has been undertaken. So in going into the further details it talks about the objectives of the study. It also talks about the participants in the study that is the population type on which the research is being conducted. It also talks about the location or the site of the study whether the study will be conducted in a school or a college whether it is a city or a small village or a tribal area all these details are given in the statement. The next step comes is the collection of data. Now why does the researcher need to collect data? Data is the medium which links the objective to the findings. So the data is the major evidence of the inferences that are drawn based on the research conducted. It deals with identification of those persons or those institutions which are the most suited ones for the study at hand. Then one needs to take the permissions from them, then one needs to update them with the exactly what the research would be conducted and then collect the data from these persons or institutions. The important part here is to collect the accurate data from the individuals because this data is going to form the basis for the inferences to be drawn later. 
it is very very crucial part of a research so the discussion on data collection talks about the details of the mechanics and the various decisions that are made while collecting the data it also gives the detailed procedure of actual data collection the fifth step in conducting a research is the analysis and interpretation of the data now this is once again a very crucial stage because at this stage the researcher starts making the meaning out of the data that is collected together at this stage the researcher starts breaking the data starts putting them together and drawing the conclusions here the data is represented in the form of various tables or graphs or maybe some other figures as well the researcher not only draws the conclusions but the most important aspect is the explanation of such conclusions so during this explanation the researcher tries to give the judgment or the rationale behind a particular observation or behind a particular conclusion now this is the place where his researching skills come into picture the results are then discussed in terms of findings as well as the recommendations for further researches though the research is complete at this stage technically the actual responsibility of the researcher does not end the researcher has taken lot of efforts for conducting a particular study and it is his responsibility as well as the privilege to share this research and this study with the wider society that is why the sixth stage comes into picture where the research is reported and it goes for further evaluation while reporting a particular research the researcher has to take into consideration who is my audience and depending on the audience then his language of the research will be varying if one is writing say for a journal the length of the research may be a few pages if a researcher is writing a full fledged research report independently then it may go to maybe 60 pages 100 or maybe even at times even 500 pages while reporting this research the sensitivity is very very crucial and the sensitivity of the data and the research procedure has to be taken care of by the researcher the details of the research process the actual data collection process is to be given in detail this is essential so that if some other researcher wants to replicate the same study in some other socio cultural circumstances it should be possible for that person thus we have seen that a research uh, process consists of total six stages and the researcher really takes lot of efforts to take his quest for knowledge quest for making the situations better through a very long process each stage is linked with the other one and it is very crucial that the rigor needs to be followed at each and every stage